Hi everyone, I'm Alexander Tabak, CEO and co-founder of Unikeys. Unikeys is a company that facilitates access to cryptocurrency ecosystems to individuals, merchants and enterprises. We manufacture biometric card hardware wallet that look like this. And we also develop and implement payment solutions in order to uh, make it easy and secure for everyone to interact into blockchain powered ecosystems. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I think Yuki has introduced me a little bit. I could understand a couple of words. Uh, so my name is Alexander Tabak. I am CEO and co-founder of Unikeys. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank BaseLayer and the whole team for having organized this event. It's, it's very nice of you to have organized it because we are trying to uh, reach out to the community in Japan and it's the best way for us to reach out to, to people that are aware about uh, blockchain and Ethereum in particular. So what's Unikeys? Uh, basically, Unity is a company that wants to facilitate uh, the access to cryptocurrency and blockchain-based ecosystems to individuals and enterprises. So what's Unity is basically, uh, uh, to tell you a couple of words about myself, uh, I, I started in the blockchain space by developing proof of concept and pilots using Ethereum and Hyperledger Fabric mostly for financial institutions in Hong Kong, Singapore and China. So uh, at the, I would say at the very beginning of the adoption from banks, say in 2014-15, uh, there, there were a lot of problems when it comes to the utilization of cryptocurrencies and how easy it is to store them securely and, and confidently. So, so the, basically the project is born from three problems. Security, how do we store private keys? And how do we make it also easy for people to utilize these private keys? So user experience. And, and the last thing is about scalability. So we want to make sure that merchants can accept cryptocurrency payments with our device, with our hardware. So the three objectives of Unikeys is to make it easy for everyone to securely store private keys and to easily spend them into their daily life. So the foundation of Unikeys is, as you can see here, a card hardware wallet with a biometric feature that, that I'm holding here, just to show you how it works. Basically, there is a battery, you turn it on, you place your finger, and then afterward, you can use the private keys inside the card to sign transactions, all right? You can rely on the EMV chip or the NFC antenna, okay? The second layer for us that was very important is that the hardware wallet is a very important device that enables people to feel more confident uh, using cryptocurrencies. We wanted to make sure that also merchants can accept crypto payments easily and from a hardware wallet directly. Most of the payments today happen from hot wallets uh, that are not securely storing the private keys, or at least not uh, giving the ownership of the private keys to the, to the users. We wanted to make sure merchants can easily accept crypto payments from a hardware wallet. The third layer for us is about enterprises. A lot of banks, governments, Fujitsu recently in Japan is going to work on cross-border payments uh, uh, with, I think, around nine to ten banks. Ripple is working with dozens of banks in Japan for cross-border payments. There is a big question here. How do we make sure that all those people, all those banks that are going to utilize cryptocurrencies will feel comfortable doing it? Because there are public keys, private keys, and cryptographical data that needs to be stored securely and easily accessible. And finally, the last layer I'm going to talk about a bit later is scalability. Today, there are a couple of problems when it comes to uh, spending blockchain, uh, cryptocurrencies on top of blockchain, because it takes a certain time to validate transactions. Uh, for instance, Ethereum currently uh, allowed to validate around 20 transactions per second, Bitcoin around seven, and that could be and that is an issue if we want people to utilize and spend cryptocurrencies on a daily basis. So I will present you later what kind of solutions do we bring to face this, these problems. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these slides. What I wanted to show you is a couple of trends on the market. The first one is on the biometrics. Uh, as you know, passwords uh, count for most of the breaches uh, nowadays into, a, into our systems, whether it's the financial systems or any uh, IT systems. And the biometric features on top of different devices, whether it's a card, a smartphone, a watch, are basically booming uh, on year on year. So it's a trend that is uh, uh, very strong and that is going to increase uh, every year. The second aspect is smart card. A lot of us are using credit card most of those credit cards are not really secure in the sense that they are accessible through the NFC antenna. Uh, a new trend that is uh, on the rise right now is to en enable people to have cards that are secure with cryptographical codes, for instance, dynamic codes behind the cards, or biometric data, like our card, for instance. 
smart cards are on the rise in the sense that uh, uh, the current cards that we're using every day are not that protected. And there is a risk for us to be hacked or uh, to have our funds stolen at any time. Another trend I wanted to talk about is the rise of blockchain. So when we talk about blockchain, we could talk about distributed ledger technologies or any kind of ecosystems that is being built right now by individuals, startups or enterprises. So this trend is definitely on the rise and is going to uh, be uh, 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 implemented at real life levels. For instance, banks have been working for the last three, two, three years on proof of concept and pilots. We are starting to see uh, the first real implementations. Uh, there are still some ways to go, but it's happening and it's coming soon. We need to make sure that we have the necessary tools to handle it. And the second part is about the number of patents. I'm not sure if you can really see the slides here, but basically you have at the top here Bank of America, IBM or Visa. Those are companies that are registering patents on blockchain solutions. What it shows is that definitely there is an interest for blockchain solutions and that a lot of companies and corporates are making sure that they are not missing the wagon, that they're going to understand what's blockchain and that they're going to be here when blockchain will definitely be a, a very a sustainable tool to use for, for people. So earlier I was talking about private keys and cryptographical data. Uh, as you know today, when you hold cryptocurrencies, you do have to secure uh, and you all have a private key and a public key and an address. Uh, those data, most of the time, uh, crypto enthusiasts might not know where they are stored and how they are stored. So uh, there was a couple of hacks that happened in Japan and other countries on centralized exchanges. And that's where people started to understand that they need to understand what's really behind the scene. Where are the keys stored and who's really storing them? Is it an exchange? Is it yourself? Is it on the smartphone? Is it on a hardware wallet, etc.? So there is a new trend towards hardware wallets. Those hardware wallets basically are cold wallets that enables you to isolate your private keys from any internet connection. Most of those devices today are USB sticks or hard drives. So this, this trend started to really rise uh, after a couple of hacks that happened, uh, you all know here in Japan about Mt. Gox and CoinCheck, for instance. Those hacks are pretty huge and was basically a wake-up call for a lot of crypto users, right? So it made sense for users to start buying and purchasing hardware wallet and to control the ownership, right? Because this, this is about controlling your ownership and not relying on a centralized third party that you might <coughs> not really know and that might not have a governance because governance is a big issue. It's also about technique, right? How do they develop uh, uh, their cold wallet storage or their hot wallet storage? But it's also about governance. What happens if there is a hack? What happens if there is an issue? You need to have a, a point of access, an access point in those companies to make sure that you can complain whenever you have a complaint to, to present. All right, so now uh, I'm going to present the, the Yuki card. So uh, I can actually uh, pass it on to you later. You can have a look. So basically, what we propose is a card hardware wallet. So a card with, equipped with a secure element that enables you to generate your private keys and to encrypt them inside your card. So you have your card and for you, the only way to use the data inside is to basically utilize the biometric sensor right here, biometric fingerprint. You can store up to eight fingerprints inside the card and you can use it in different ways. You can use it with the EMV chip, for instance, for crypto ATM or with the NFC antenna with uh, different kinds of phones or with terminal of payments, for instance. Uh, you can use it with POS, point of sale uh, terminal, or phones in order to make transactions with the NFC. So one thing that you really need to know is that why do we you know, bring forward a card with a biometric feature is that we wanted to make sure everyone, whether it's crypto enthusiasts, tech savvy people or non-tech savvy people, can feel comfortable simply placing a finger on the card in order to sign transactions. It's all about simplicity, right? Because one of the problem of the blockchain space, I would say today, is also about user experience. We do have security issues. We are bringing tools to make sure that those security issues are handled. But how do we make sure that we can move one step forward and bring more people uh, uh, to join the blockchain ecosystem? So that's one of the purpose of Unikeys is that it has to be simple, secure, and easily transportable. So one very in interesting aspect of the biometric card that we present, this hardware wallet, is that uh, instead of relying simply on two factors, so something that you have, for instance, your phone and something that you know, your PIN code, what we're presenting is what we call three-factor authentication. Okay, it's a process that adds a factor of authentication. Something that you basically are, your fingerprint, something that you have, uh, your card, something that you know, your PIN code. You could add a PIN code in order to access to your wallet or in order to sign transactions. 
So it's something interesting because a lot of people are uh, utilizing, uh, for instance, tools like Google Authenticator in order to add a, a layer of protection with pin codes and passwords. But right here, we rely on biometrics and there is no more pin codes potentially. You can add a pin code if you want. It's up to you to decide what kind of uh, UX you want to set. All right. So, so now that we have managed to build a hardware wallet that combines different features, that is transportable, we need to make sure that those cards can be used out of uh, uh, people's home and out of their uh, own ecosystems, right? So what we're building as well is a merchant app, basically to enable merchants to accept crypto payments from the card directly, all right? It's not from the smartphone, it's not from a hot wallet, it's from a card uh, that looks like this and that isolate private keys. It's something that is not yet on the market, Right now, what you have mostly is hot wallets based on smartphones that enables you to scan a QR code and make a payment. But on the back, what you might not know on the back end, uh, the, the exchange or the platform is basically controlling most of the private keys and is making the transaction uh, for you on your behalf, right? So you do not control the funds at that moment. You are simply utilizing their service in order to make a transaction, right? So what we propose uh, definitely for merchant is to download an app and simply be able to do what they currently do, for instance, in, in a couple of shops that I visited in Tokyo today. They simply present a QR code, right, with uh, uh, inside that QR code data representing the address of the merchant and the amount. You can simply scan it with your phone, use your card, authenticate with the biometric fingerprint, and tap the card on the phone to make the transaction. So one of the very important solutions that we have developed uh, as well at Unikeys is a solution whereby people can make crypto payments from the hardware wallets directly peer-to-peer. -peer. What, I, what I say, what I, what I mean by saying that is that, uh, you know, today when you want to make a transaction at a merchant, if you simply rely on the blockchain, you might wait from five to 10 minutes, which is not something you want to do, so not something doable, right? Uh, however, uh, there is a new trend toward what we call payment channels or state channels. Basically, the idea is the following. Uh, you have two, two kinds of techniques to make sure that you can make blockchain scalable today. The first one is to uh, increase the size of the blocks, for instance. This is something that Bitcoin Cash is doing currently. Uh, and the second layer is about basically creating an off-chain ecosystem that would be relying on the, pro uh, on the protection of the blockchain. So at the end of the day, what we want to propose is the ability for users to have a private key controlled in inside a card, secured inside a card, and their ability to securely authenticate and make a transactions using payment channels peer-to-peer, -peer, right? We would not handle the keys for them and we would not basically uh, fake a transaction. We would simply let them make a transaction uh, among each other, right? So this is what blockchain is supposed to do, all right? But today, if you make a transaction at the merchant on the blockchain, it's not exactly what's happening, all right? There is in the back a third party that handles the transaction and is making a couple of, of, of movements behind the scene. What we do with payment channel is basically we, we facilitate connections between merchants and user and we say, you guys can be connected to each other, all right? And you can make transactions peer-to-peer -peer and live instantly without having to pay high transaction fees uh, on the blockchain. A bit later, I'm going to show you two proof of concept that we built, we developed. The first one is basically an app that enables you to sign transactions on Ethereum, okay? Using the, the Ethereum blockchain. And the second proof of concept is relying on payment channels, whereby you can see that transactions happen instantly and merchants and, and consumers are connected directly. So that's a question that comes often to, to me. Uh, what are our, your competitors, right? Because we work on a hardware wallet and we also work on the merchant side. I would say we have two kinds of competitors, even if I think we can be an alternative to, to both of these competitors. The first one are hardware wallet providers, okay? Uh, companies, for instance, like Ledger or Trezor that are providing hard drives and USB sticks to secure and generate private keys. The second type of competitor are the crypto card provider, okay? Basically what they do is that they rely on the Visa and MasterCard network to enable you to exchange cryptocurrencies on your smartphone and then spend fiat currencies uh, uh, on, your, on, daily, on a daily basis. So you don't exactly spend cryptocurrencies. What you really spend is fiat currencies using the centralized Visa and MasterCard network. All right, so the proof of concept I just mentioned, uh, there are those two. The first one we developed last December is an Ethereum wallet, whereby we secure and generate a private key on the card and we sign transaction from the card. The second one is on payment channels. What we do is basically is that we simulate an interaction between a consumer and a merchant that are able to sign transactions on payment channels and make live crypto payments thanks to the protection of the card. So if I could summarize what I, what I just talked about, uh, I think I've been quite clear on the objectives that we have. 
uh, what's something that was also important for us is to be completely transparent when it comes to the partnerships, all right? Our, our, our logic is to build, okay? We build on the hardware side, we build on the software side, and to come to meet the community. So the reason why I'm here today is because we have developed a couple of proof of concept and that we have a hardware. I'm not coming here to present you a couple of words and nice slides, all right? So uh, there, there is a lot of hype in this space. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's part of every new technology, all right? But we want to be part of those companies that are presenting a clear governance, transparency towards the development that we, we make as well. So that's, that's the core team. We are based in Hong Kong. We have one person in London as well. Uh, the company was actually born in Hong Kong because, well, well, I would say myself, I've been living in Hong Kong for six years. And two of our main partners on the hardware and the software side are also based in Hong Kong. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go a bit quickly now. Uh, so we've been incubated in Cyberport, which is like the number one uh, tech incubator in Hong Kong. We're also a member of the Finance Innovation Hub in Paris. Uh, and, and today we, we are happy to, to meet more uh, Japanese people working in the blockchain community because we really believe that our project has, uh, uh, I would say, a role to play in this ecosystem. So before I present the proof of concept, I just want to mention that uh, uh, in our roadmap that we intend to pre-sale the, the card from December uh, online and to deliver them in March uh, 2019. Uh, that's very important. We also have a second version that will be coming at the fourth quarter of 2019, uh, which will be including a, a, a display and a Bluetooth feature as well. Uh, a, a new card with a display and a Bluetooth feature for the last quarter of 2019. So the first app is the Unikeys wallet I mentioned, we developed last December. It's a very simple Ethereum wallet, whereby you can sign in on the app with the Yuki card, and you can sign in with a pin code, you can pair a new mobile phone, or recover. So for instance, if I lose my card, I can type my uh, uh, mnemonic words, 24 mnemonic words, and recover my, my private key. So now I'm gonna access to my uh, wallet by first authenticating on my card. So it's only after having authenticated my fingerprint here that I have access to my app. Here you got a couple of basic features, the balance, the address, and the recent transactions. So now I'm gonna just show you how to, to make a transfer. So you have different ways of typing the address. It's a pretty cumbersome, uh, uh, you know, uh, combination of digits and, and, and letters and not everyone want to remember that and nobody can remember it actually so either you scan a QR code or you can just simply uh, take the card for instance of your friend or just tap it without authenticating to transfer the, the public address right so that's a public information I did not need to authenticate first all right so now I just tap a, a small amount of ether then I got my transaction details with the, the gas price, all right? Something classic that you have on your current wallets. And when I confirm I need to authenticate on my card in order to be able to use the private key and sign the transaction, all right? Okay, so now I just signed the transaction. So the transaction is pending and will be validated in a couple of seconds on the, on the Ethereum blockchain and the balance will be updated. So that's it for the first uh, uh, proof of concept. Uh, on the second one, now I'm going to rely on payment channels to make a transaction. So here we go, I just accessed my app. Uh, my fingers were a bit sticky, sorry. Um, so you have two, 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 two information here. So the layout of the app is the same, uh, right? No surprises on this side. On the left side, you have a merchant uh, a website. So basically, it's an online uh, uh, experience that I'm going to present. So it's a merchant website where I can buy cans of soda. Okay, the price in Ether is, is written. Here it's the merchant dashboard, which is only visible by the merchant, whereby you have the address, uh, the balance uh, uh, off-chain, so on payment channels, and the balance on-chain, what I have on, on, on the blockchain, right? So the first thing I need to do as a consumer is to make sure uh, my channel is funded with Ethers. So again, here we are using Ethereum, okay, as the, the foundational layer, the blockchain, and, and for the payment channels, we're using a, a version called Sprite State Channels, all right? You might have heard about Lightning Network, Raiden Network for Bitcoin and Ether. Uh, we are using another uh, version called Sprite State Channels, all right? So now as a consumer, I have my card, my finger is uh, uh, registered inside the, the card. I need to make sure that my wallet, my channel wallet is funded. So what we have imagined for this proof of concept is that you could buy top-up card that looks like this. Basically, it's a card with a QR code, okay? and you might have paid it with fiat currencies and Japanese yen at the merchants at 7-Eleven, for instance. And once you have this card and this QR code, you can basically scan it and fund your channel instantly. 
I just scanned the QR code and as you can see here, uh, we did not have to wait for the blockchain validation. Okay, that might last from tens to, if you're not lucky, a couple of minutes. So I can instantly now start to go at a merchant, whether it's for physical payments with uh, a reader that could look like this, for instance, with an NFC antenna inside, or I can just make an online transaction using my smartphone and my card. So now if I go back uh, on the website, I'm gonna try to minimize this a bit, and I just select a product, for instance, a can of Coke, not to mention it, and I check out, which is something classic that you see in, in, in the merchants using Bitcoin, for instance, in, in Tokyo. So now I'm gonna scan this QR code. And now I get the merchant address and the amount I need to pay. So same thing here. I need to use my private key to sign what we call a Sprite message. Sprite message is, is simply, instead of sending a signature, the same signature I have used on the first proof of concept to sign an Ethereum transaction, I will use a, a special signature, all right, uh, and generate it from the card to sign a transaction on my payment channel. So I was mentioning earlier that we are a payment facilitator, why? Uh, you might know that with payment channels, uh, um, say two persons might need to open a channel by making a deposit on the blockchain in order to start making transactions, all right, like me and Yuki right now. Uh, but a consumer and a merchant might not know each other, or you might not open channels with every single merchant in, in Japan, right? That's not even doable. So we here basically enable, uh, uh, without inter intervening into the transactions, both of these parties, so the consumer and the merchant, to communicate, all right? We're just a payment facilitator. We do not have the secret hash to be able to receive the funds. We are just in, in intermediary in the transactions. So with payment channels, you might have couples of intermediaries in the chain, all right? But none of those intermediaries have the ability to receive the funds because you need the consensus among the, the chain. So now same thing, uh, I just authenticated on my card and tap my card just next to the phone in order to sign the transaction on payment channels. And it's gonna happen instantly. See? So transaction is not pending, it's instant. And the transaction fees are much, much less uh, uh, than on the blockchains, all right? Here you can see that the balance on chain, uh, off chain, sorry, has been updated and the balance uh, on chain uh, as well. I mean, balance on chain hasn't changed, sorry. The balance off chain has changed for the merchant. One, one more thing, uh, you know, as a, as a merchant, you know, you, you might not want to know about all this. Sorry, go ahead. Where can I see a product the image? The fact that I chose the Coca-Cola, for instance, on my display, where can I see the, the product? The display. Sorry? No, th th this is the display, sorry, uh, uh, that you have as a consumer. This is just the merchant dashboard we place here. You, you cannot see it as a consumer. The product? Right here. You, you select your product here, you add to card right here. No, you see it on the, on the website, right? On the, you generated the QR code when you selected the product and that QR code is linked to the address of the merchant and the amount, okay? So I can cancel, I can add Pepsi, Coke, check out, QR code is different and corresponds to that very transaction. One of the challenge for payment channels as well uh, is that some versions of payment channels uh, enables you to get the fund on chain only when you close the channels. So imagine you open a channel, you make hundreds of transactions, then you close it, then there is a second transaction on chain, all right? However, uh, uh, with our implementation in Sprite state channels, you can withdraw funds. You can do a partial withdrawal so that you don't have to close your channel. The channel stays open and you can make transactions anytime by topping up, for instance, like I showed it before, all right? So now if I click on withdraw channel, there will be a transaction on chain that will happen uh, with transaction fees. Because you only make, uh, uh, you pay transaction fees when you make a transaction on chain. When it's off chain, you pretty much don't pay any fees. So now you can see here that a transaction happened on chain for a certain amount and the gas fee as well information is here, all right? So this proof of concept is an experience that is successful and that intends to explain to whether it's a merchant or a tech person how it works, all right? 
the merchant dashboard, of course, wouldn't look like this for the merchant. It needs to be much smoother. But uh, with this proof of concept, we are capable of showing that a consumer and a merchant can be connected by securing and controlling their private keys with a card and make live crypto transactions without having an intermediary controlling your assets. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.